Just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with head- What is everyone, it's Parkerman and A&A Chief Editor of Disabled Gaming Reviews and welcome to this special episode of Retro OS. As you may be aware of, the date of uploading marks the 19th anniversary of the day that my past, present and future changed. Last year we reviewed the remaster of Final Fantasy VII. This year we are remaining in remaster territory with a timeless classic first person shooter from the mid 90s. Does this game will have what it takes to steal Square Enix's thunder? Or should this game be long forgotten? Without further ado, let's find out. For everyone, the original plan was to review the official game to Star Wars Episode 1, but as soon as I noticed this title dropped, I abandoned the original plan completely last minute. Now, I might review Episode 1 on a completely different episode of Retro OS sometime down the road. But anyway, I digress, let's get on with this review. The early to mid 90s was a very interesting year in video games. The entire gaming industry was back at its feet after the industry crash of 1983, while Nintendo and Sega was battling the tank over dominance of the console gaming market. The PC gaming market was in fact booming, as numerous developers churned out all-time classics which still hold relevancy even to this day. In 1992, Ed Software released one of the most prolific first-person churches of all time, Wolfenstein 3D. It is a well-known fact that Wolfenstein 3D built the foundations in which Doom was built on. Due to the massive commercial success of the title, John Carmack and John Romero immediately began the development of a sequel. However, dun dun dun, the development of the title was to be cancelled, as Romero didn't want the title to draw the spotlight away from the title that they were also developing, Doom. But the project leader Scott Miller decided to outright buy the rights of the game from Ed Software. The story had to be altered and Apogee released the title as a standalone product. Now the shareware version which contained the prequel episode was originally released from December 1994. The full version of the game dubbed The Dark War released a few months later in February 1995. You play the part of a member of a team of elite special operatives known as the High Risk United Nations Task Force or HUNT. You had to infiltrate San Nicolas Island to eliminate a cult which plots to destroy nearby Los Angeles. The Axis ability scores are as follows. The Kicklings of Visibility gave a 10. Due to the game's age, there are no colorblind modes available. Although there is very little need for one, there are no color coded elements that can cause issues for colorblind players. Audibility, I scored a reasonably low 7. Again, due to the game's age, there is very little spoken dialogue in this game. The cutscenes are all text based. However, you are reliant on your sense of hearing to play this game. When you are exploring levels and when enemies are alerted to your presence, a sound cue will play, for example, Outsider. So despite the shortfalls, this game is very easily playable for a player with hearing impairments. Next up on the agenda, mobility gave it 10.5. In terms of the PC version which we used to test it, the keyboard and mouse controls can be fully customized to suit your impairments. Better still, there is full controller support right out of the box. This is an excellent feature as players have more of a choice on which input that method he or she wants to use when playing this game. However, there is no legacy stick layout available for the PC version. For a mobility impaired player, implementation of a legacy stick layout when it comes to shooters, for, albeit for a first or a third, can be a deal breaker. So the implementation of a legacy stick layout can be beneficial when it comes to player with mobility impairments. Last but certainly by no means least, gameplay gave a 10.5. Once again, Night Dive Studios flat remastering old video games is shining through in this game. 
early one in the year, and this studio gave us the awesome remake of the 1984 classic Dustin Shot. The review of this title can be found here in the written version and the video's description. This version of the game contains all the game's original episodes, including the aforementioned The Hunt Begins chapter. With Steam Workshop support being implemented, and the game's editor included, there is no end to the content that is available to play. The audio section on the options menu, you can switch between the original 1994 soundtrack and the soundtrack of the 2013 remastered version of the game. The ludicrous edition includes the original version, which is runnable through a source port for the ultimate nostalgia trip. With new episodes, widescreen and high refresh monitor support, which makes this game relevant in today's market. In summary, Rise of the Triad Ludicrous Edition is probably the best way to enjoy this cult classic first person shooters from the mid 90s. The additional content and Steam Workshop support allowing you to find and install mods from an extensive library made by the community with a single click gives this game infinite playtime for as long as the modern community remains active. The game's heritage to the Wolfenstein franchise is still present in this game. The enemies look like German officers from World War II and the inclusion of the iconic MP40 submachine gun. The team at Night Dive has done a superb job of taking a cult classic from the 90s, leaving the majority of the game's assets intact while adding features which make this game relevant in today's market. So if you're an FPS enthusiast who's looking for a classic first person shooter game to play, I could not recommend this game enough to you. And the overall score is 95%. This is Sparta Commander 1990 Chief Editor of Disable Game Review signing off, and I'll see you guys in the next review.